Hello dear viewers, I'm George from Ireland. So I'm going to talk about how Trump is setting the tone for uh, for the United States during coronavirus and how he's really set, um, he's really hitting a bum note on this one. Uh, we see his um, fake tanned moo on television every day. Um, we don't see his other moo, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, so much anymore, which is, which is very welcome development. One of the few uh, good things about the Trump presidency, well, that she's gone now, not that he pointed her in the first place. But uh, coronavirus is, is letting rip through the United States, 450,000 cases, the highest number in the world. It's the last large country to have a significant number of cases. So he had so many warnings that he disregarded from expert opinion, um, part of because of his contempt for, um, for uh, experts, um, his cherishing of ignorance over knowledge again and again, and a large part of the Republican Party fo fo follow him in that. Now, I used to support the Republican Party to 10 years ago, but it's, it's turned criminally insane since. So it's really the height of Dunstan for him not to develop, develop any kind of coherent policy. And the people who say it's in every action, but they still support Trump. In which case, why doesn't, why doesn't Trump say, we're reopening the airports? If that's really what he thinks, and that's the right policy, demand that he does that and say that he was outrageous and what a wimp and what a fool he was to ban travel from any other countries. So just, just carry on as normal. Just get the economy growing, bounce back, if that's the right attitude. Because you could have a proper lockdown, you could have a completely libertarian, non-interventionist approach. What he's gone is kind of somewhere in between vacillating. What a flip-flopper, allowing states to take make it up for themselves, take make, make it up, make up their mind for themselves, not taking responsibility. He is responsible. He said called this a national emergency. Ergo, he is responsible. So the federal government's getting involved, but just not doing things properly about, you know, how... They're deliberately driving up prices. Is that because he wants to his friends to, to profit from selling these things on price gouging? You know, the federal government bidding against the states and raising prices. So ventilators to be to be distributed, not on the basis of need, but on the basis of, of how much money you have. But that's really how healthcare tends to work in the United States. So um, the United States got five percent of the world's population and over 30 percent of the world's coronavirus cases, a truly shocking statistic. So to say the, un the United States is doing egregiously badly, you know, six times more than its fair share of, of coronavirus. OK, coronavirus is not fair, but what would we expect now? In fairness, this is partly because some of the less economic developed countries have carried out very few tests because their health care is not so advanced. They don't have the money for these things. The United States obviously got tons of money, loads of money for health care, but disproportionately spent on the wealthy, on, on um, um, these um, um, anti-malpractice uh, insurance schemes on huge doctors for salaries. I know they need to be pay well paid, but they don't need to be paid so staggeringly well. No other country pays them so well. They all have decent health care, often better. So the United States has had, I think it's 14,000 deaths already. Wow. Well done, Donald. So and the Republican Party is anti-enlightenment, so he's, he's a good person to head it. You know, the way that they, they disbelieve in evolution, many of them, they disbelieve in, in evidence, evaluating objective data, you know, about gun violence, about climate change, about anything else, sticking their head in the sand about unwelcome evidence. In fairness, Democrats are sometimes bad on this as well, talking twaddle about, about gender, that you know, can choose your gender. So um, uh, Trump has... Uh, really taking us back a few centuries, the kind of person who believes in hating people over dogma that he doesn't grasp, that um, Muslims are all bad, unless, of course, they're rich. The Mexicans are all bad. Well, no, they are. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. No, they're not. You know, this all sort of double think he goes in for. Um, anyway, so superstition. Well, if we go to church, if we pray, we'll be OK. Um, in what sense are you immune from coronavirus in a place of worship? It's like anywhere else. Pray at home. Why well, you don't need to pray in a huge group. Doesn't make any difference. You know, Christianity, the Bible doesn't say you have to pray in a huge group. So unscrupulous hoaxers and hucksters exploit the gullibility of the unlettered lumpen proletariat. And that, that is that is the um, Republican base. I know there's some wealthier people who support the Republican Party. There's some very immoral people who support it for logical reasons, as in if you're super rich, you're going to get a tax cut. Um but Trump is um, talking so much jabberwocky about this, about coronavirus. Remember how it was going to vanish? It was going to be miraculous. It would just disappear um, uh, in March. 
and now the warmer weather, well, it might do. I mean, it'll reduce. I don't think it's going to disappear like that. Take the hottest country in the world. Even they've got some coronavirus. It doesn't spread as much, so it appears. But this is sort of educated guesswork because it's quite a new thing. Um, what if he's wrong? Now, it's not being it's not being, being optimistic here. It's be, being mindless. This, these, these Panglossian prognostications, rather than soberly assessing the evidence out there and formulating policy on that basis. And that's what's needed more than ever. Detachment, okay? Be unemotional in examining this, but he'll always sentimentalize things. Somebody said something nice to me. Ooh, you asked me a nasty question, and I'm so pathetic, I'm so infantile, I won't even answer that. I will just throw a wobbly, refuse to answer, throw toys out of the pram. It's contemptible. You know, it never ceases to amaze me that so many people, about 45% of the population in the United States, approve of him. The so-called manly men think he's wonderful. Um, you know, think he pretends to be a Christian. How can they be fooled by that? It's not remotely convincing. He's more like the Antichrist than a Christian in his vanity um, in committing um, most of the most of the ten deadly sins, calling himself the chosen one, not committed actual murder. Often talked about it deliberately. How you know the the shoot someone dead in Fifth Fifth Avenue idea, or um, deliberately targeting civilians, like you said, completely unfazed about killing large numbers of civilians in Afghanistan, Iraq. Other presidents at least tried to keep those those deaths down. Um, remember, he said he said it was going to be um, close to zero uh, coronavirus cases. Um, in April, close to zero. Remember that? No, sorry, it's going to be the twelfth by the twelfth of March. That was it. By the twelfth of March, we're close to zero. Try four hundred and fifty thousand. Is that close to zero? I mean, he's an ignoramus. He's enumerate. He obviously can't count, which is why I went bust four times. So there was assiduity from Joe Biden. I know people say Joe Biden's mind is not as sharp as it was, and that's true. But uh, I would take him over, over over Trump any day. He's a bit sharper than Trump, and Trump. The, you know, the, the gray cells are not really functioning. Uh, do his neurons fire? Something wrong with the synapses there. What's the thought process in, w with Trump? How does this help me? How does this aggrandize me? That's the only calculation he makes each time. That's why he's so boastful. There's all this unwarranted self-confidence. I know this is self-esteem culture. Self-assurance is, is a virtue up to a point, but it can be a vice when it's not justified by any... Uh, reasonable basis to think you have any talent for something and so he obviously hugely overestimates his ability in all sorts of areas he's hyper emotional which is a very bad trait in any kind of leader who need to, to be unemotional as I said about this to calm down put the feelings out of it and rationally assess a, a situation make decisions that way not what would you like to believe not if somebody flattered you if someone compliments me over much I'm immediately suspicious. My guard is up. What do you want from me? Why are you saying that? That's excessive. Um, or if somebody says anything he finds disobliging, um, then oh, he throws a tantrum. So he's bombastic, sentimental about, well, himself really, pretending to care about America, will obviously take the side of America's enemies um, and take the side of Kim Jong-un, the cruelest tyrant in the world, who... Uh, who killed an American student with dreadful conditions in his prison that was there for something trifling, and Trump will take the side of Kim Jong-un against his own people. Wow. The Republicans are supposed to be patriotic. Not so long ago, the Republican Party took a stand against communist tyrants. Now Trump falls in love with Kim Jong-un. Got that? Falls in love. And the Republican base laps it up. Wow. Something's gone very badly wrong, how they, they've lost their compass like that. You might not think they were pretty moral people, but they were meant to be anti-communist. Um, anyway, so I remember him hugging the US flag, part of his fetish patriotism, but uh, as I say, supporting America's foes like um, uh, the Putin regime, Kim Jong-un, Xi Jinping, absolutely adored him, Mohammed bin Salman, um, whose country's uh, values are antithetical to, to American liberty. So Trump always trivializes these life and death decisions, which is uh, very worrisome, uh, that he would just like things to be true, so he'll believe that they're true. Whatever looks good for him, he'll say that. He never speaks with pathos about all these deaths, whereas um, the president has been mourner-in-chief. Barack Obama bore himself with fabulous dignity in, in, in dolorous times. 
and Trump has a complete lack of eloquence. Uh, he doesn't seem to perceive that the power of his office is to comfort sometimes, but generally for the betterment of, 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 of uh, the public. That's what, that's what the president is he's there for, to help people. No, it's obviously self-help with me and him. It's not self-service. It's not sort of serving the public. It's self-service. Fingers in the till, no doubt. Get people to stay at his hotel. Send the military or whoever it is to his hotel. More money for him. And with coronavirus, he opines. He never states the facts. These are the statistics or claiming that this certain medicine works, this anti-malarial drug, which has serious side effects. And we have little idea whether that's going to work. Touting that it could well be snake oil. Could make things a lot worse. People have heard what he said and taken it and died as a result. Do you think he gives a damn? No, not on your nelly. So he emotes, never thinks. So what are his traits? Vulgarity of all kinds. Sexual vul vulgarity, I'm up for that. But just a general lowering of tone in politics. Material extravagance, he fetishizes and anything like that, any, any products, any status symbols. Um, things have got to be tangible with, tangible with him. It can't be knowledge. It can't be um, qualities of, of, of a person. It has to be baubles, ostentation. It's been quipped that he had the same interior designer as Saddam Hussein because he has the same mindset, expresses the personality, I suppose. Um, so America's got this idea that there's l'embarrassement de pauvresse and therefore there's the opposite. You should show up about things. OK, not all Americans um, think that by any means. And many Americans will be as aghast about Trump as I am. Um, so uh, what else? Philistinism, provincialism. Uh, he's an ignoramus. Despite his grandparents coming from Germany, his mother coming from the United Kingdom, he married a Czech, he married a Slovak, and then he married an American. But all these different nationalities involved in his life, he seems to know nothing, care nothing about other countries. You think he might be a little bit cosmopolitan, but no, he's as close-minded and as incurious as can be. Just vile. The pits. Um, and that's why he's gone on for such tasteless architecture in his hotels. And imagine if we could draw on the fabulous architecture of the United States, of other countries, and look what he's got. He was in construction. So many hideous accessories. And not just Melania. Yeah. Has that this woman had work done or what? You know, no wonder she never smiles. Does she have any emotion? Wow, some people will do anything for money. Do you think she actually gets into bed with Donald? No wonder she spends most of her life in another city. So what are the features of this late phase of his life? The descent into snarling senility. Sort of person who could well be carried off by, by, by coronavirus. So we might get lucky yet. Emotional incontinence. Flying off the handle. Fiscal incontinence was a feature of the earlier part of his life. And then people daily listen to um, him inveighing against the liberal media, the fake news media. And he's the one who's always publishing fake news. Listen to his ungrammatical rants, drivelling, uh, this, um, this screed of non sequiturs. And these are apt to prove indigestible. Like, <laughs> learn almost nothing. Disinformation. Um, it could be could be Kremlin disinformation, but no, it's coming from him. This unpalatable race baiting, which he hasn't gone in that much for mu that much recently, apart from Chinese coronavirus. And yes, it originated in China. But why do you have to keep ramming home the point? That doesn't solve anything. And the Chinese, you could learn from them. They proved a way to, to deal with it better. Sending aid to, the, to China when he knew his own country didn't have enough. He was warned and doing really very little to help the affected states apart from Florida, because that's a bellwether state for the election. Now, the anti-vaxxers are curiously silent, and quite often Trumpsters. Why, why, they, why do they think vaccine is not a terrible thing now? Because deep down they know they work, and they're quite like one for coronavirus. So Trump, what will be his masterpiece? He'll leave, he's leaving us that unbuilt wall. No, sorry, not wall. Fence. Ha ha. Even he doesn't call it a wall. What will Trump's legacy be? Well, I, I warmly hope it will be the total destruction of the Republican Party, though I think it unlikely. Anyway, those are my uh, uncollected... Um, Musings. Toodaloo.